Okay, ah, bye. Bye. I'll go off video mode, guys. Okay. Come back. Yala, yala, <laughs> ए वहां ये press
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed participants and distinguished guests. Welcome to our workshop on From Engineering using ChatGPT for Academics. I'm your host, Agitiara from TDR Global Asia, and it is my pleasure to guide you through this enlightening sessions. Before we delve into the depths of AI in academia, let us first introduce our esteemed speaker for the tonight's sessions. Our first speaker, it is... We are very privileged to have with us Dr. Vincentius Arca Testamenti, veterinarian from Center for Tropical Medicines, Universitas Gajah Mada. He is a research manager and AI practitioner. And we also have with us here, Mr. Diljit Kanan from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, an expert and practitioner in the field of AI and education, who will be sharing insights on using AI and prom engineering for education. I guess some of you must be very interested in the session, and I will uh, leave the first session for Dr. Araka, veterinarian, will, who will help us to explain the use of AI in academics. Yeah. Over to you. Thank you, Agi, for the nice introduction. Good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be here with you. I am Arka, uh, as mentioned, uh, I am a researcher at Center for Tropical Medicine at Universitas Gajah Mada Indonesia. And then maybe just for a clarification that I am not an expert in AI. I am just uh, a user of ChatGPT. And uh, I hope some of you attended our previous webinar. Uh, so this is actually a, a series of workshops and this is the second one and um, in this workshop I will be um, mostly talking about using ChatGPT as a research assistant and then later on Biljit will uh, guide us on how to create or develop a good prompt so ChatGPT will respond to us better something like that so yeah, I would like to start with the outline of my session uh, tonight. So I will shortly uh, talk about how does ChatGPT works, uh, just a simple one, and then different capabilities of ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4. And then I will do a live demonstration of simple data analysis and then table analysis image generation, generating diagrams, and then searching and summarizing scientific articles. So I will start with uh, how ChatGPT works. This is just a simple um, process from the user perspective. We can say that a ChatGPT user can type questions, requests, or prompts through a chat interface. And then the ChatGPT will respond to us in a natural language. It's uh, capable of simulating a conversation. And then ChatGPT can also follow the context of conversation. And then uh, it can adapt its responses based on the user's input. So I guess maybe most, or if not all of you have used ChatGPT before, and you are, are really familiar with this uh, system that ChatGPT uh, use. But actually on the back end, on the technical perspective, what they do is they uh, use a generative pre-trained transformer, which is a type of large language model. So basically, ChatGPT is trained to predict the next word in a sentence by calculating probabilities. And then they also train ChatGPT to perform specific tasks. Um, by, by dividing the inputs from us, for example, uh, I write some sentences or some comments to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will break down my inputs into what they call uh, as blocks, like smaller, uh, uh, like some, uh, a word or smaller, even smaller than words, something like that. So it can understand and generate response to the input. So, uh, there are actually several uh, models or versions of ChatGPT. So the ChatGPT 3.5 is the free one. And then the ChatGPT 4.0 requires a submission. So like ChatGPT Plus, it's a subscription-based service. So what are the, the basic differences? So on the input aspect, ChatGPT 
uh, only works with text, meaning that we can only uh, send comment or anything by typing by text. But ChatGPT point four point oh is also capable of analyzing our request uh, with image, text, uh, and as well as file containing tables, graphs, etc. So, for example, you can send a file containing graphs or tables to ChatGPT, and then you can say, analyze this file for me, analyze this table for me, or show me what is interesting from this table, something like that. And then from the output aspect, ChatGPT 3.5 is only capable to uh, response with text, even though uh, it can include tables, codes in various programming languages, formatted text, mathematical expression, but still they are only text. But with ChatGPT 4.0, uh, they can also generate images, tables, as well as attachment files. And then now we have uh, in the system, we have so many GPTs, uh, which previously called plugins. And then you can generate so many more uh, types of outputs, and I will share some of them with you tonight. And then the process is um, ChatGPT 3.5 processes prompts based on pre-trained knowledge. So I I guess uh, all of you has uh, is familiar with this concept uh, that it cannot connect to the internet, only uh, can work on the pre-trained knowledge. But ChatGPT 4.0 can connect to the internet and various uh, GPTs. So for the first demonstration, I will show you uh, just a simple data analysis using GPT 3.5, the free version. So I have a table, um, please wait a minute. So I have this table, this is a simple one. Uh, this is from a, oops. Um, this is not the one. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is just a fake table. This is just randomly generated. So let's say that we have participant ID and then we have age of the participant. And then, for example, this is a study for from a drug study with drug A and drug B and then placebo. And then each of the particip participant have uh, each efficacy score and then side effects. I can just copy and paste this into chat GPT and then ask it to analyze the data for me. For example, I can say that please analyze this table for me and then i will just paste the information and then it will do something uh yeah it takes some time but uh, in the free version gpt 3.5 actually sometimes uh, it works if uh faster than the paid one because when are, when you are using the paid one they do like comprehensive analysis instead of the chat gpt uh 3.5, which is very basic. Um, I'm gonna refresh my browser. Yeah, there must be some kind of uh, lag. So, ChatGPT can show me that the table lists side effects for two drugs and a placebo group uh, to identify the most. Oh, actually, this is not the new one. I'm gonna start again. I don't know what is happening right now because it usually uh, gives like very quick response to simple uh, command. Um, Arta, you can try hi and then later put the data. You can just say hi first. Okay, okay. And see if there is response. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's there working. There is some, yeah, you need to refresh it, I think, or reload okay. it. Yeah, <laughs> this is so unfortunate that because I have been using it for days, but it decided to uh, 
to be error uh, on the workshop. So uh, actually, basic what it can do if we use the ChatGPT 3.5, it can tell you that okay, this is a data from a clinical study that compares the use of drug A, drug B, as well as placebo, and then they can do uh, usually without asking. ChatGPT can uh, say that okay the median of the efficacy is like this and then i can ask um what is the most common side effects that occur in the participants and then it can calculate like how many experience fever how many experience uh, stomach ache, something like that so in my example i showed you like only 10 participants but this is particularly particularly useful if you have like 200 or 100 participants so it will make your life uh, much easier so Actually, I have something that maybe uh, by uh, just by PowerPoint, I can I can do it um, something like that. So yeah, I can ask which participant experienced the most side effects, and then it will screen all of the participants, and then uh, it found that okay, this participant experienced five side effects, something like that. And then I can also ask it to categorize the side effects based on which area of the body is affected. So it can generate something like, okay, this is uh, in the uh, head area, like dizziness and then uh, headache and then migraine, something like that. So it will categorize the side effects. And then um, uh, it can also show, okay, this is uh, gastrointestinal related side effects. And then it will list a diarrhea, stomach ache, something like that. So it's, it's very useful, even with the free version. But uh, I'm going to show you as well. I hope this time it will work. Uh, even further analysis with GPT 4.0. So I have on the right here actually a picture of reasons for dropping out of school. So this is a picture, uh, a PDF, and I have that PDF. Uh, I will send this picture to chat GPT 4.0 using the GPT called data analyst and then I will tell it to visualize reasons for dropping out of school with bar chart and it can do that let's hope it works this time um, okay so now I'm switching to GPT 4.0 and then I'm going to use uh, on the left, left side you can see data analyst okay uh, and then I will send a picture here and then I will ask it to uh, wait a minute I will just visualize reasons for dropping out of schools using bar chart okay so this is the picture that I sent. So it's not a table, it's not a text, it's a picture. And as I mentioned, it takes a while with the GPT 4.0 because it does even a strong, stronger analysis than the free version. And then also because I am asking it to do image generation, also it takes more time. almost there okay something like this so um it created a bar chart for reasons for dropping out of school and this is from a picture and then it can read the numbers it can read the title of the column something like that and then it shows a bar chart uh, of all of the reasons but now i want to do something more so as you can see uh, there are some uh, groups of reasons for example family related financial related and then personal related so i want to ask ChatGPT to create another graph but combining all of the reasons into groups so i will ask it to just to be quick, I want to say that categorize the reasons into family related, financial, personal, school related, and other. And then it will generate another graph with 
uh, my desired uh, groups, something like that. So while waiting, because uh, apparently 20 minutes is a very short time, I will go with another uh, thing that ChatGPT can do. I'm sorry that, uh, oh, it's, it's showing now. Yes, it understands my request. Oh, okay. Um, actually, I've tried this before and it showed uh, immediately that uh, it can, the text is started for this interaction. Okay. Uh, see the reasons of drop out in the file I sent you and categorize the reasons into Yeah, uh, there is a uh, disclaimer as well that uh, you can see on the bottom that ChatGPT can make, make mistakes and then consider uh, referring to official source of information, something like that. But I'm still curious why um, it's not automatically show what I want. Because I've tried this and and ChatGPT can uh, group all of these uh, reasons into uh, family-related, financial, personal, and it automatically calculate how many percentage or how much, uh, how many participants are in that group, something like that. It's capable of of doing that, actually. But anyway, I will I will just continue uh, just to show you what else that uh, I've been. Uh, using ChatGPT4 and I want to show you this one so GPT 4.0 with DAL E is capable to generate image so this is very practical so uh, this is a real case uh, I, I wanted to create a cover picture for a progress report on my uh, project it's called advice uh, averaging evidence in for policy in Southeast Asia and then I tell it I tell ChatGPT what advice is about, and then it generate image, which uh, I can do like it understand context. So first, I ask it to generate an image, but then I ask it to make it minimalistic and professional style, which I like better than the previous answer. But I kept uh, asking it to to what you like fine tuning my my prompt. So. I asked to picture only, do not include the book or report, something like that. So this is a good example how I use a bad prompt to ask ChatGPT to perform a task. So later on, Diljit will teach you about how to uh, formulate the prompt so it can be uh, more effective and ChatGPT can understand you better, something like that. And this is just a picture. This is even a crazier picture, but I ended up using this one as a cover cover uh, page for my report and then uh, it also capable to do diagram actually but i'm gonna skip this one because uh, the time is uh, ticking i think this is more important so there is a gpt inside of gpt 4.0 called consensus and then uh, it can access uh, databases of scientific articles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, okay so I'm going to start with consensus here on the left side consensus and then I'm going to let's say that I am a researcher that I want to conduct uh, an active case finding for tuberculosis active case finding is when you try to screen for tuberculosis so you are not waiting for patients to come to clinic or hospitals but you actively approach the community to find tuberculosis cases so i can say that i would like to conduct an active case finding for tuberculosis brainstorm me on what methods of detections are good for active case finding of tuberculosis and then by using consensus uh, it can connect to a databases of scientific articles and then it can uh, brainstorm me teach me uh, what is the best approach 
to do active case finding for tuberculosis. And then, yeah, it say that you can do this one, number one, household contact screening involves visiting the homes of newly diagnosed TB patients. And then it will show you the uh, scientific article that supports this information. So there is the citation here and the link to go to the, uh, I will show you. So it goes here. This is actually a third party app called Consensus, but this is a good one. Uh, I think this is uh, right now the most popular uh, research GPT in, in GPT 4.0. And then it can show you even the key takeaway and then uh, the title, the authors, and then the citation you can cite. Uh, and then you can see the original article live full text. So it will go to sex journals and then, yeah, uh, this is very, uh, very handy when you are looking for like browsing for initial information that you need. So of course you still need to do it manually or systematically, especially if you do systematic review, you cannot just rely on ChatGPT to do it for you. But at least this can be a good brainstorming for you if you want to write something or if you want to propose a new research project, this is very helpful. And for example, I can also ask it to, uh, because now ChatGPT is showing all a single study. For example, it say that you can uh, do household contact screening, you can do breath testing, you can do blood assay, you can do uh, with the uh, x-ray, something like that. But I want to uh, look for systematic review for this purpose. So I want to say that uh, find systematic reviews that compare different methods of tuberculosis active case finding, including the mentioned above, like screening household contacts, breath test, blood assay. So I want to find something, uh, scientific evidence for comparing all of the above. And it can do it for you. It can find systematic reviews and it also gives you the link to the systematic review. So again, this is very handy for researchers or for students, for uh, lecturers even, uh, when you want to know some facts, some evidence, but you don't have the time to, you know, to do systematic review yourself. You don't have the time to do very comprehensive literature uh, review. This is a very handy first step that you can use. Um, I think, I will stop here. So, uh, I guess there will be question and answer at the end, right? So, thank you so much. And I hope that uh, if you have questions, you can type it in the chat box or, yeah, maybe you can type it in the chat box. And we also have a designated time later. Thank you. Uh, I think thanks, Erka. Uh, thanks for sharing a comprehensive uh, this one on the research that you can do as part of uh, using ChatGPT. So uh, my name is Diljit. Uh, I spend a lot of time uh, designing courses, uh, especially online courses. So that is a context in which uh, uh, I'll be sharing uh, sharing my experience on. Uh, how to develop courses using, I, I mean, academics in terms of research, Alka has uh, shared it beautifully. We'll take some questions, but after, uh, I will go with more like uh, creating online courses or even uh, if you want to design courses as lecturers, how do we do it? Uh, so please feel free to uh, add your thoughts uh, in the chat. Uh, Arka and my team uh, here will uh, point me out uh, what is happening in the chat so that I can adapt the chat uh, accordingly. So, I mean, uh, let me give a disclaimer. I think nobody is an expert in prompt engineering or AI. The field is evolving a lot. Uh, uh, what When we learn something, there is another version which has already come out. Uh, when we just catch up with that other version, there's another tool which is already out. Uh, there is a lot of competition. There is uh, Google, which has come out with new tool like Gemini, but we have just stuck to ChatGPT because it's the most popular one which is available. So this is more of an experience that we are sharing from our side on what we have worked on. We are very keen to hear from everyone if there are uh, there are there are case, cases that you have been 
trying out or you have tried out any activities in chat gpt or even any other tool because the field is so much uh, so broad and uh, uh, everybody would have tried it in their own ways there is no right or wrong way in doing prompting but uh, one thing i what we understand about prompting is that it's how effectively that you are communicating with the ai system to get the desired output that we want so uh, the 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 context is uh, how well can you communicate to the ai systems and how well the systems are able to respond so the question is about uh, what is the right kind of question that you can ask uh, and uh, to get the desired out, 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 output that we want so i think we had this joke within within our team that uh, sometimes we we want to we expect to ask stupid questions and ask a very get a very brilliant answer from chat gpt which is fairly if you ask a very standard question you will kind of get a standard answer so it's about how you how you actually prompt your questions to the chat gpt and that's a response that we will get so please feel free uh, uh, to put so uh, so what i what we will do is we will try and create an online course together with you okay uh, everyone can give their input in the chat and uh, 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 i mean arka may be able to share that uh, what is coming in the chat uh, meanwhile i will switch to uh, i will share my screen i'll i will be using chat gpt 4 for creating the uh, course so uh, i think the suggestion was like we will try and create a course on scientific writing so so i think uh, wh- what we have found very effective is to always give context uh, context to the uh, gpt about what we are trying to do so in this case i will say that okay we are trying uh, okay i am trying to create a course on sci- uh, scientific scientific writing uh writing and this uh, so i want to maybe determine that okay so i'll say that this is for this is for a public health uh uh students uh, who are uh, in the first year of uh, masters in public health so wh- what this does is it gives kind of chat gpt the context in which what we are talking about so okay so let's go step by step okay so it gi- it uh, so it's already started outlining which i don't want so i'm just giving this context okay so first i will start with saying that what what do we usually do so maybe let me try and create a uh, course name for it right okay can you suggest uh suggest uh, a course name that i can use for the for the same right so new okay so so the uh, we could potentially do is we can use chat gpt to create lot of ideas so what happens is if you want to name a course or if you want some ideas on how the name looks like right so it you you can really prompt it to generate some ideas that uh, can help so uh, one thing that we have um, uh, uh, that we found it very interesting is to kind of prompt it using a role based prompting for example uh, i uh, i want uh, chat gpt to think as a marketing person and uh, uh, and suggest a course or i uh, so i let me try that so uh, so the prompt is can you use act as a marketing expert in online courses and can you suggest a better name uh, better wait better name for the course so what this does is that uh, chat gpt starts thinking like a marketing uh, person rather than as a simple uh, person so the, uh, and also it kinds of give you explanations on why things are done so th- giving giving the role uh, role to the chat gpt really helps in terms of fine tuning your prompts to in a different context so you can potentially say that uh, i will show you in terms of learning objectives okay so i will say that okay based on this based on this can you define a learning objectives uh objectives for the course 
this is the direct prompts that we can give saying that okay can you define the uh, learning objectives for the course so what uh, so j just to understand the context right uh, chat gpt will look at the context that you have provided before and kind of will define define the objectives based on what is provided in the before and also it will also look at the uh, 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 its own database to kind of come up with the courses uh, uh, come up with the output i mean so in this case when i give this output when my prompt is like basically define the learning objective it gave me a direct uh, learning uh, learning objectives for the course that you can do understand the importance of scientific writing so let's try it a bit differently let me uh, now invoke the role of a instruction designer okay so i will say act as a in instruct instructional designer and uh, define the learning objectives uh, accordingly okay so when you when i gave the instruction as an instruction designer can you see they have already saying that it has invoked this saying that you you will have to define it as smart but so understand the role of scientific communication and you can see the difference so potentially you can invoke it as professors or invoke it as a tech person so based on what output that you are trying to do you can invoke the uh, invoke the prompt accordingly so basically you need to use a uh, terminology act as whoever you want them to be acting so okay so we have got a name we have got the uh, 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 what uh, objectives what is the learning objective so let me also try and see give get uh, can you get me a list of target group that i can okay uh, or maybe i will say because i have already defined this as masters in public health can you define the the target group uh, uh, that this course will be useful for right so since i have already defined it as a, a primary target group so it's a, so it's suggesting me that the primary target group is this one so potentially if you want more ideas on saying that which are all the uh, uh, target group that we can offer this courses you can potentially ask chat gpt to say that what are the things uh, see it's already giving me secondary target groups other than the primary ones and the tertiary and the characters of the target groups right so i have now the name of the course i have now the objectives i have i have now the uh, 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 the target group so based on all this information that we have created created so i am going to be more specific right can you create a lesson plan for a uh, let's say i want to develop an online course right uh, or for uh, maybe like uh, five modules online course or i let let's make it blended course blended course in which um let's say three weeks is online and two weeks is offline right so we are defining that three weeks is online uh, two weeks is online uh, or offline so based uh, uh, what else can we give so and also can you create a interactive course for the same okay so i will also say act as a in instructional designer or like act as instruction uh, designer uh, for the same okay so what chat gpt does is it takes all this information so the more specific that you uh, that your prompts are the more specific the output that you can generate so in this case i had put the uh, prompt saying that it should be five modules so it's dividing that into, into five modules it's also I, I i have instructed it to be interactive so it's adding that in, interactive element to the course like activities like reading assignment discussions and things like that 
so here it's generating the mod so and also can you see like the first three one is online right and the more complex subjects like making data speak manuscript the complex subjects is automatically divided into an offline mode right okay so i have created so let me try i mean another one thing which i found very interesting is that you can potentially convert this into a table format right can you convert the same lesson pl uh, lesson plan into a table format now this is quite useful because uh, if you want to have a structured data into a simple format i think it really helps us to give that in a table format so as you can see it's putting the same content into a table format which we usually when we develop a course we will first define this into a word document and then put it into a table format right okay so let's get it done now i will uh, so th th this same things can be done in gpt 3.5 also okay till now whatever i have shown i think there is no difference between uh, there will there may be difference in output but technically uh, in terms of what you can get you can potentially prompt the same in 3.5 but uh, i will show you some some things that we can also do it in 3. Point, uh, 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 i mean 4 so potentially i want to convert this into a word document okay so i can i can tell that prompt saying that can you convert this uh, um okay based on all this discussions can you convert the uh, this lesson plan and and the table into a word document so what it basically does is uh it will analyze so basically when you see this analysis uh, chat gpt is potentially writing a code to convert this into that document so it can convert that into a document format right so uh we have tried both document and also i will show you one more example i i think i have five more minutes so i will show you maybe uh how to create an excel sheet also uh uh till it analysis maybe i'll give that input saying that uh or wait maybe i'll just wait for two two more seconds to meanwhile if there is anything in the chat which is come okay nothing wrong. okay so as you can see it is converted that into a document format right and then potentially i can download it and kind of open it and use it so this entire thing can be in table format and even if i ask it to put the learning objectives and the whole thing it can put that into a document format okay so based on this what i want is i'll show you quickly two more things like right? for example i want to create an excel sheet it's possible right so you can say that convert this uh, convert uh, convert this into an excel sheet or like can you create a project plan for this it can do so let's try something different so let's try and uh, create a social media post so i want to promote this course so I, here i will do one thing i will invoke the Uh, uh social media person right act as a social media expert and create uh, a uh i would say um, instagram post for the same course uh, instagram page for uh promotion promotion oh i spelled it wrong okay so it's it's already going ahead and giving me the image uh, this one i actually wanted the text so i'll wait for it to create the image first let's see okay it's taking some time so basically all these images are not very perfect sometimes the writings are different as arka showed uh but you can potentially get a first draft and then prompt it saying that can you make it minimal and things like that but one thing okay let's try a uh, text right so can you create uh, create a 
Twitter post for the same. Uh, so let's see if I can get some text. Oh no, it's still creating. Okay, so I need to be more specific as I said. So can you create a text-based Twitter post uh, for the course promotion? Is it giving me? Yeah, yeah. So it was taking the context of image, but now since I said specifically text, it is giving me the hashtag also. It is giving me the enrollment link also. So this can be used as a uh, Twitter Twitter post uh, for sharing the uh, this one. Okay, I think uh, uh, and the last thing that we were saying. So sometimes we want to convert this into a project, right? So we use this a lot. So uh, okay, so based on uh, all this information. Can you create a project uh, project plan for the same in a bullet point list, right? So this is something which uh, uh, we found it very useful is that con once you're done with the entire thing, you can potentially ask it to create to-do list for you so that you, uh, we get an idea about what are all the things that needs to be done to kind of get it uh, get it going right uh, i've been talking a lot usually our sessions are interactive uh, i think we will stop here and maybe uh, take some questions and then we will uh, see uh, uh, if there are something more uh, promptings or something more we can show you yeah again yep so we're back. I hope everyone have an enlightening session. And now we can proceed to the questions and answer sessions. If everyone have any questions, you may raise your hand or you may, if you feel a little bit shy, you can just text us on the chat room and ask anything. So... Uh, have we got uh, questions? There are some questions that uh, Arka already answered, like the consensus GPT on the 3.5 version. Uh, do you mind to explain a bit about that, uh, Arka, so everyone uh, can hear a little about it? Uh, yes. So previously, I showed that uh, GPT now has, chat GPT now has GPT, so if you can see on the left side, so if I click this explore GPTs, it will show some uh, of the trending GPTs. So for example, this is image generator and this one is connected to Canva. So uh, you can see uh, your, your design, maybe just a simple design, something like that. And then this one is consensus, but all of these GPTs are only available on the uh, GPT plus, uh, so with subscription. So this is the image generator. This is the data analyst that I used previously, something like that. So uh, because now GPT is uh, collaborating with third party to create this uh, GPT. So now I think the the possibility is yeah almost endless. Now now people can people can build their own GPT and uh, use it in combination with ChatGPT. Wow, it is very interesting. And the next questions, it's from the same person. It's from Riri Johnson Fonje. Does Chat GPT 4.0 understand pictorial data or information, example given, graphs, etc.? Do you mind to explain a bit about that, Arka? Yes, it uh, sometimes it can even uh, understand the irony of a picture or the joke inside the picture something like that so it, it's possible to send chat gpt pictures as well as pdf file uh, excel file word documents uh, together with your prompts okay so oh we have a new questions from dinesh uh, what are the alternatives to chat gpt 4.0 for those who are unable to buy a subscription based plan uh, do you both of you have any insight on this maybe diljit 
uh see i mean what we have found is gpt4 definitely has some functionality but gpt3.5 also gives you a lot of functionality in terms of output that you can generate right and another one thing uh, you may want to try is uh, the bing uh, so if you have an outlook subscription if you actually go to bing uh, it gives you a limited version of gpt4 for free so you can potentially go to bing and try out gpt4 uh, that's another way of just accessing gpt4 but to be very frank uh, uh, the 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 uh, sometimes uh, see in our case we got it subscription from uh, from the institute or somewhere else so based on the output that you can get uh, and the efficiency that you can use you may want to check how how, how the price is worth for your time Uh, so but i agree that uh, it's under the paid uh, the some of the functions are under the paid walls of gpt4 okay so is there any more questions so did i say thank you diljit thank you well any other questions from anyone from the participants you may raise your hand and we can spotlight you here but if you feel like too shy to talk about it feel free to uh, text us in the chat room okay so uh fatwa sari tetra dewi thanks a lot for knowledge sharing i have to leave thank you so much fatwa for joining us in this session well as uh, we haven't got uh, new questions maybe uh, both of you can share some experience uh, of using it like a funny experience or interesting experience that you might have during your time using and exploring the chat gpt maybe for you uh, arka first um yeah so maybe uh when you for example if you want to get the gpt 4.0 and use the consensus as uh, I did, maybe just a reminder that you can go on the wrong way of writing your scientific paper or your proposal, something like that, if you ask GPT to provide you what you want. So for example, I want to do a research uh, about uh, this one and then show me that that research is good, something like that. And it will feed you with all of the articles that show that, okay, your research is good, your method is good, but Uh, just a reminder to not do it like that. So what you want to do is to see the bigger picture and ask ChatGPT to provide all of the information that you need. So uh, from the negative side and then the positive side. So it's it's a downside of ChatGPT that it will tell you what you want, but you need to be careful with that. Okay. So, uh, Diljit, do you have an interesting experience yeah i mean we we use that a lot right now uh, in our team uh, because uh, we uh, i think one of the things that we found it uh, extremely uh, i mean uh, but having said that uh, arka uh, mentioned that we have to be careful when we use it it can hallucinate i think if you especially use 3.5 there is a lot of hallucination there are some text you can just generate but act this as a starting point for anything that you're doing right in terms of generating ideas right in terms of creating a to-do list for something you want to achieve right so i think the the uh, one funny example that we were uh, really trying this time is to uh, uh, is to get so we asked uh, we were developing a website and we wanted wanted to create a project plan okay so rather than ask, asking for a project plan what we did was we we this is very interesting right so you can give this prompt called break down the entire process step by step so you can really say take a deep breath and break down the process step by step into very small uh, so we said like can you break the entire process into 50 step process to achieve something and what chatgpt does beautifully is to actually break down this entire so if you want to write a paper and if you are struggling with it you can say can you take a deep breath and break down this process of writing a paper into 50 small steps that Will i can do every day to achieve it your sound is off okay i think can no i think it's me? good Arka? i think it's good yeah well yeah. Uh, we cannot hear you so okay can you hear me now harka i can okay okay, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. So basically, if you try and break it down step by step, I think you'll get some wonderful results. So next, go and try this process. Try something you want, and then 
follow it with the with the tech saying that break it down step by step into a small 50 step process and you will find very interesting uh, output that is coming yeah okay so we have more questions here uh from crystal jekko hi can a particular person get the paying version or is it only for the institution you can potentially go and buy a paid version uh, i think it costs 20 dollars you can as an individual go and buy a paid version i think for teams plan there is an another plan which has come out recently but as an individual you can go ahead and buy paid version and we have more questions to arka can uh, one of you help me privately to support on data analysis using gpt with graphs interesting <laughs> yeah interesting because uh, but still uh, i want to be careful with that because uh, I think they are still in the developing phase and uh, as I mentioned in the chat box previously that its capability to understand complex graphs may be limited so especially when you have maybe very small uh, bar graph something like that with very dense information so I think that will be a little bit uh, difficult for ChatGPT to do but for simple graphs I think it's uh, it, it can do that. Yeah, as Diljit mentioned that the paid version, the ChatGPT 4.0 is less hallucinative, but still uh, sometimes uh, it cannot really understand what you uh, send them, uh, the graph, I mean. I think I would I would uh, strongly ask, uh, suggest you to try it out a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. by yes. putting small data set and then how much you you are getting output right and then you can because it's still not that uh i mean uh, so we use this as a starting point right you get a quick idea you get a quick analysis you give a quick uh, look at uh, the data and give some feedback and then build upon it kind of manually a bit okay so any of you um any of the participants or want to uh, ask more questions, you may raise your hands or use the uh, chat. Just curiosity, how many of you are using it? Uh, uh, saying that how many of you are using chat GPT as of now for their own work? And if there is some cases, some use cases that you can share with us, it would be very interesting. Yeah. Anyone uses ChatGPT here? Yes, really? there's someone. Riri. Riri, do you mind? Do you want to share your experience? I mean, five. Use uh, ChatGPT 3.5. And uh, Jots also say yes. Apparently, people use it. They'll get it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can share my experience if you would like to hear. So, yeah, uh, hi, I'm Dr. Jotsna Sapkuta and I work in healthcare. I'm a microbiologist. And so I use chat GPT. I, I'm, I'm based in Nepal and, um, I work with, uh, Geneva office at find. And so generally I use it for the research article to summarize it. And then uh, like, if I have to, um, make a proper proposal better or something when I like I think through it I write it and then I can rephrase it using the chat GPT so it's kind of a very useful for me yeah thanks. that's great thanks thanks for sharing that point right I mean one thing which we found it very interesting is if you yeah. if something that is very complex and that we are not able to understand so you can just put that complex thing into chat GPT and say can you explain it into a simple language Sometimes I use a word like, can you explain to a child? So it really breaks down and uh, yes. uh, makes that complex subject into a very simple language. I think thanks for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. And also the simpler simpler one also when we like to make a proposal, we want something very classy to look like. And then we, sometimes we don't get that word and coming from a developing country, it's quite difficult for us. So we can rephrase those sentences and put it in the proposal or anywhere. So yeah. Thanks. Sure, perfect. 
Thanks for sharing that. I just wanted to also say that you can potentially translate this content into your own languages. It may not be perfect, but you kind of get a sense of what what the content is also, right? Thank yeah, you, Jules, for sharing the thoughts. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your experience sharing. Uh, anyone wants to share uh, their experience, we're more than welcome to uh, join uh, to welcome you here to join us uh, in the panel because it is interesting to hear uh, more about how different people and different academic parts uses chat GPT. So anyone wants to ask or wants to share? Okay, we still have, oh, Dr. Yusuf Guni, welcome. You may open your video. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. How about you? Are you fine? I'm Mr. Guni, I'm from uh, medicine, and now I'm still at uh, the Faculty of Public Health. So, uh, I, lastly, I started to use the uh, GBT 3.5, but uh, we have some question uh, because they give us uh, a lot of information. So uh, I want to ask you to give it information, we depend on this information, uh, 80%, 50%, or 100%. It is uh, just uh, my question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Diljit and Arka. You have any comments? Did you get the question? So if I understand right, what is the efficiency of ChatGPT, right? 3.5? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so to be very frank, uh, the efficiency, so what, I mean, the basic difference is uh, ChatGPT 3.5 is based on some three, uh, three, I don't know the numbers exactly, but some billions of parameters and GPT-4 is like the bigger parameter, right? So in terms of efficiency, they have a comparison sheet, but one thing is sure, uh, GPT-4 has much more efficiency than GPT-3. Uh, actually, 3 used to be bad, 3.5 is much better and 4 is much, much better, right? So right. in terms of uh, quality of data, 4, we found it extremely good, uh, but I think this this keeps evolving a lot. So, but uh, having said all that, these models are all prediction of new words, right? So you can't be fully 100% saying that, okay, this is 100% correct. You need to always cross reference and, and check it before actually putting it into, into your own articles or if you're writing scientific papers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf. So uh, there's Riri sharing in our chat session uh, on chat box. Use for paraphrasing in my writer apps of grant proposals, research proposal, business proposals, and drafting emails, etc. I think most of us can relate with this. Even I could relate. How about you, Erica? Yeah, exactly. So especially uh, because. Uh, we are not an English uh, native speaker, so ChatGPT is particularly useful for me to, you know, correct my English. To, but still, uh, I want to encourage everyone to also, you know, like uh, using ChatGPT, but also learn from ChatGPT. So I think that uh, by using ChatGPT, I think I also learn English, learn how to write sentences effectively, something like that. So yeah, this is a perfect use for uh, of of ChatGPT in daily use. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the funny things I I will tell you. I mean, you were asking, right? So suddenly after Chat GPT, everybody is starting to write like extraordinary <laughs> emails, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, like, can you write an email about uh, this? I think this is a common thing that we found, uh, right? So if you want to avoid that, I will give you a quick tip. So uh, so what people do is they will say, okay, write and leave application form. Rather than just doing that, try doing this, right? Draft your email. And just ask ChatGPT to say, so you draft your email the way you want it, right? Dear uh, sir, madam, I want to uh, inform you that or whatever in your own language. And then 
ask ChatGPT to say, keep my writing style, but just correct my uh, uh, grammar and punctuation, right? And my and but keep uh, don't change my writing style and message. You will see it interesting that it will not make this email a very uh, email that uh, anybody can recognize that it is written by ChatGPT. Uh, it will be still the uh, email that is kind of looking familiar that you have written. So think what prompt you are giving to actually write your emails. Uh, otherwise, next time that email comes, uh, some of our appraisal forms, I was appraising my team members and you you have like uh, people who wrote one pager or bullet points in the last year is suddenly writing a five pager appraisal forms with uh, doing everything in the world. So just be sure about what you're prompting into the systems to get the output. Yeah, I also want to share that now uh, you can customize ChatGPT to respond, uh, you know, like giving uh, custom instructions to ChatGPT. So here it asks you what would you like ChatGPT to know about you. So because this is my institution uh, account, so I say that the role is university researcher and then knowledge of expertise is public health. And then, for example, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So for example, prefer preferences is academic journals, primary sources. So uh, I guess by doing this, by saying that uh, I like academic journals and primary sources, when I ask something, uh, ChatGPT will not send me, for example, uh, news or, or, or anything less. So it will focus more on academic journals and primary sources. So you can tell ChatGPT4, I think, uh, how you would like uh, it to respond to you. Thanks, Sarka, for sharing that. It's quite useful if you want to fine tune mm -hmm. your uh, response based on the context in which you're working. That's really true. Oh, and that's really great. Like, I mean, we haven't have this feature in uh, 3.0 and 3.5. I think it's a nice addition to the chat GPT. So, for before we wrap up, is anyone going to? Ask the questions or maybe share their point of view or share their experience. If not, before we wrap up our sessions, uh, can we please take a little picture to commemorate this moment? I will ask everyone to open their uh, video so we can take a picture and screenshots for our meetings. Thanks everyone for reaching out. Uh, I, I think uh, so many people joined us. Please ping us. I think we'll be very happy to have conversations on ChatGPT whenever required. Right. Yay. So everyone, can you open your camera and maybe smile? <laughs> this is a good day for everyone. Okay. Oman, can you help us take a picture? Okay. Smile one, yes. two. Three, go and add another um, one. And one, the two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Before we wrap up, I want to share a little something with you from TDR Global. As uh, you might know, we are currently. So. Uh, I know most of you are our uh, alumni and grantees. We are uh, having our TDR Global Discovery, our Global Discovery. And if you're looking for an expert or if you need a multidisciplinary team for your research, if you want to share your knowledge with your the next generations of researcher, or if you only require some additional exposure for your work, you can visit our TDR Global Discovery platform. It's a public database of people and researchers who have received our funding from TDR Global, served as experts on committees, and who have been involved in TDR partnership over the last 40 years. You can scan this QR. And also, if you're looking uh, to find a researcher or if you want to look for former TDR grantee, trainee, expert, staff, or committee, and you would like to register, you can please email the TDR at tdrglobal at who.int. Again, tdrglobal at who.int. And you can use our platform to uh, look for uh, other researchers or other experts that you are interested in our field in your fields. 
Thank you so much. And we'll just share a few prompts that are helpful for your chat GPT on the chat box. In if you're having uh, if you have a little bit of time, can you please fill the feedback form on the chat room below? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in this very fruitful sessions. I'm afraid we have to go, but don't worry, we will have another session, hopefully with other uh, experts and maybe with Diljit and Arka as well again. We don't know. We might need your feedback on that. Uh, we are very thankful for this fruitful session. Unfortunately, we have reached the end of our webinar. Thank you so much and have a good evening, everyone. Bye, see you. Bye. Thank you, Bye -bye. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bernadette. Thank you, uh, Silva. Thank you, Choni. Thank you, Crystal, for amazing sessions. We can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Yusuf. Thank you, Riri. Thank you, Roberta. Yet, do you still want to discuss? Yeah, we can maybe like five minutes to catch up. We'll go. Maybe in another room. Or, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Good job. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Thank I'm, you. I'm bring spotlight to everyone. So. <laughs> Yay. 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 It's a great success, everyone. Thank you so much. Like Thank 20 so minutes much. is very short, right, Diljit? Yeah, it's yeah. too short. <laughs> yeah, I was getting started. I'm like, okay, it's over. But uh, I think people either are blown away or didn't know what to say. <laughs> uh, what, Agi? What is your sense of it? I mean, like... I think this is more interactive than our last session. Mm -hmm. I think this yeah, is la interactive. I last time it was so much theoretical, right? This time it yeah. was a bit more uh, yeah. I think, practical, right? Yeah, it's practical. And people is actually... We can stop the recording, right? I, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need to stop this recording. Common will edit this.